<laughs> What's up, nerds and nerdettes and wee little nerdlings all? Well, it's your buddy, Big Johnny G from Two Gun Pixel Presents Legendary Gaming. <laughs> so, a few months ago, you uh, saw the unboxing of Mythos Tales by Eighth Summit, and I have yet to touch it since. Partly because I knew that I was going to be playing it for October, so I figured I would just leave it. You know, this is an investigatory game, and I did not want to play something a little early and ruin something. So here we are. This is this is where we are at. Uh, I have the map out. Now, there's no really moving around the map. I mean, it doesn't even give a, a, a figure, you know? Um Hold on, let me see. I got something right here I thought I did. You know what? Let's, uh... I'm still here. Let's say... I got something for you. There we go. I'm just gonna put this guy down as I walk around the board before I go. But, uh, it doesn't really matter. Just doing that for the visual. And for the moment, I'll just put him right over here until I figure out where the hell I'm going, where I'm starting. So, this game is set in the 1920s, 30s. The typical setting, the classic setting for a mythos tale. And we are going to be investigating. So, yeah, there's no miniatures in this game. There's no standees. There's no dice. There's a few cards, but it's not really... I don't have to shuffle them because they're in num numerical order, right? And uh, all their backs are the same. So it's there's no really in that sense. This is this isn't a card game. There's no dice. There's no cards. There's no miniatures. My God, John, what are we doing then? Well, we're we're getting clues. This is literally a detective game. In fact, it is based. Sorry. <laughs> It is based heavily on, uh, I believe, 8th Summit had an earlier game. Uh, same setup as this, based on uh, Sherlock Holmes. So we have uh, we have the map we're going to be moving out. This is the book I'm going to be reading from. Uh, there's newspaper articles that we're going to have to read. And I, I have pen, paper to keep notes. And then each investigation... And we're just going to be doing uh, one, uh, the first one today. And, but we're going to keep track of it. It's like, let's say it says it ends uh, afternoon on the fifth day. I think this one might. That was in the example I was reading. Uh, then once we start the investigation, go to the first location, we start day one morning. And each place that we go to will add on. So we'll be going for morning, and then the next place we investigate, and then the third will be evening. Then after that, we're into morning of day two. And when we get to day five, afternoon, if this is it, we'll find out in a moment, we, we still have that day investigation that we do get to conduct. And then it's over, and if we haven't, uh, if we haven't made a decision yet, we have to, as far as answering questions, what's going on. Okay. And we have the directory, so if we want to, Find out where we want to go to. They're like, oh, I want to go to that. Uh, I want to go see uh, Mr. C. Stanford. And then I know that he's going to be over at U52. That's where we'll be able to bump the camera. Okay. Yeah, that might be the best I'm going to be doing. So, we start with the big book of investigations. And we're doing a seed of evil, a grain of evil seed, seedless grapes. We're doing a, a grain of evil by Hal Eccles. A woman is attacked in Uptown Park. Is that Upton? Uptown Park. One, what we're going to be going to is the art. So, by the way, uh, before we get more into it, it's already almost five minute mark. I guess I should say at some point, spoilers. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. 
Uh, yes, there will be spoilers throughout this uh, playing of A Grain of Evil. I'm not going to be doing the entire book. It'll probably take me 10, 12 hours of sitting here. Uh, but Grain of Evil we will do. And this adventure takes place, this Investigation 1 takes place on June 30th, 1929. So let me grab the bookmark. Comes with a nice little bookmark. Let me put that here for a moment. Let me put this off to the side. And we see the newspapers. It comes with newspapers. And so you got to collect clues. And they're, and they're double-sided. And they're double-sided. So there's a lot of stuff going on in this game. But we're just concerned with June 30th, 1929, of the Arkham Advisor. So uh, before we start reading, we will check the day's paper. And then we will go and... Uh, more than likely, uh, you're, you're running this game uh, doing investigation work for Professor Armitage. So after we read this, we'll, we'll hear from him. So look at this. Newspaper in 1929 costs two cents. That's the first thing. Am I, am I just old or cheap? That's the first thing that pops out to me. Um, so it talks about Senate proposal changing date of inauguration. 64 to 9 Senates agree. Um... I don't see any names. You know, I'm thinking to myself, it's going to be like specific names, like Senator Norris, uh, or a specific place that's going to be jumping out. But during the investigation, we can always go back to this at any time to see if there's any other clues. So international news, war stocks, department payment not to be deferred. The plea of Premier Ponkin, Poincare to defer. I'm, I'm, not, I'm butchering that. Uh, Premier Point Care to the further maturity date of $400 million debt, which is owed to by France to the United States on the account of purchase of army stocks after the close of the Great War. World War I. Bird, uh, Bird reports 20,000 miles of new lands. Commander Richard E. Bird stated today in his official report to the Navy that the aviation expedition to the Antarctic that he has has seen at least 20,000 square miles of hitherto unknown Antarctic areas. Huh. And film actress Gladys Brockwell is hurt when her auto leaps the embankment in Hamburg, Germany. Her face is badly disfigured and there is little hope for recovery. Wanted women earn good money by making bungalow aprons in their spare time. So I'll send a self-sent envelope, letter to Aladdin Apron Company in Asbury Park, New Jersey. 592T, 2TP, 5959-2TP. I guess that's how you'd read that. Personal ads, personal ads, personal ads. LP, it must not happen again. Down in RJ, know what this means. Hmm. CS missing tabby cat. SI reward to D. Pickman. S. Parsonage Street. Birth announcement. Last night saw the birth of twins for not just one family, but three. That's six babies. Congrats to the Smiths, Baxters, and Ahos. These families have added six more members to our community. But this, as well as reading that, I know, what? Is this a misprint? We wouldn't, right? Is this a misprint from the publisher? Or is that a clue? Browns of Arkham. And then tiny little print there. Like, can you make that out here? Uh, it says, Soar, a missing child. Well, there's no L there. I'm assuming that's child. I don't know what, a, what other five-letter word C H I blank D would be. Saw a missing child. Do not follow to six Main Street. What the hell kind of message is that to put in the paper? Okay, that is like that that's that's completely fishy. Okay. So I I, I totally I don't think I'm gonna forget that. You know, so you got to make notes. So, uh, Browns of Arkham. I think that's all I need to write. And uh, news. And I think I'll uh, 
I, I remember to reference that, but what kind of message is that? Now you got some uh, advertisements. I, I love the thematics of this game. It really, really pulls together great. Fat is folly when it can be reduced easily, conveniently, and best of all, safely by the use of la parle obesity soap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> la parle obesity soap. This obesity soup Soup, soup. Did I say soup? This obesity soap, used like an ordinary soap, positively reduces fat without dieting or gymnastics. Absolutely harmless. Never fails to reduce flesh when directions are followed. That sounds fishy. Send for book of testimonials. Box of two cakes sent prepaid on receipt of $2. The Norwood Chemical Company. That doesn't sound safe. No, it's the St. James Building, New York. Black Noir. Oh, man, I can't really read it all that. I mean, I can, but... Okay. So you get the idea. Uh, Moonshine related death. Man, the following party. Sean Woodhead is dead. Through these commands are being held in the Arkham Jail. A gallon of moonshine and whiskey was consumed by the three of them. Hoover fills three farm places. Federal oh, federal members of the Federal Farm Board. Call to investigate River Dock smuggling. Ah, concerned citizens of Arkham addressed the monthly meeting last night, and chief amongst the concerns was the increasing numbers of strange foreign. Here we go. Slipping ashore via the docks late at night. It is as yet unclear from where these people come from. But the regularity of this so-called human smuggling has prompted the city to launch a civil investigation with the dock authorities responsible for the mate. Hmm. Baseball? Arkham Speed Boys versus the Dunwich Whippoorwills. Theft Delay's new exhibition? Much anticipated new series of exhibition. Uh, museum has been delayed. Robert Gladding, a missing artifact, a junior curator at the museum, confirmed that at least one of the new artifacts on loan from the Boston Heritage Center has disappeared. At first, it was suspect that the artifact had been misplaced, but on examination of the entire consignment from Boston, the police were notified. Gladding said, Although theft is unlikely, as the artifact in question has little value, we cannot rule it out at this time. Hmm, little value to you. That's what I get from that. The investigation continues, and now work is underway to change the exhibit in order to compensate for the missing items. Well, look to the editor. Frankly, I am pulled by the police that have failed once again to take prompt action to stop illicit activity from the occurring on the unvisited isle. It is clear to all who live within sight of the cursed island that there are miscreants, no doubt devil worshippers or some such, conducting ceremonies there. Fires have been seen from the Garrison Street Bridge. Reports of the police have fallen onto deaf ears with the response that there is not enough evidence for an investigation. It is about time that the APO started to take our children's... Tartankowski's Bakery, Best in Arkham, Breads, Pores, Pastries, 1888. Stop by our shop today. Property owner of the Emperor Home. Be sure to secure the property as workers from the hospital have seen lights on the third floor. Yeah, that's lights because they're checking out what they stole from here to make a ceremony. Bostonian academic arrives in Arkham. Mr. John Ingram is scheduled to arrive in Arkham any day now. A senior curator from the Boston Museum, Victor Ingram, is scheduled to visit the Miskatonic Exhibit... Sorry. is scheduled to visit the Miskatonic Exhibit Museum. Whilst in town, he is due to judge the exhibit... Wow. He is due to judge the exhibit competition between the ju junior curators of our museum. To the curator with the best exhibit goes the honor of taking the vacant role of senior curator, and it is expected that the competition will be fierce. Mm. I mean, you wouldn't steal from the museum and then 
Use it for a display. Where did, no, that doesn't sound right. Okay, well, this is the last one. Uh, sunny spells with a light easterly breeze. Temperature is 65. Why were they sunny spells? Hmm. So a woman attacked in Uptown Park. Or is it Upton? Maybe it's pronounced. I'll say Uptown. A disturbance occurred around 7 p.m. last night in West High Street when a young woman collapsed. Bystanders were able to provide assistance to the woman who was obviously in distress and grievously injured. The police were summoned and were quickly on the scene. An ambulance took the young woman, who has yet remained, who has yet remains unnamed, to St. Mary Hospital for urgent treatment. Detective Garrison of the Arkham PD has made an appeal for any witnesses to the incident to come forward and provide statements. Police are treating the incident as a criminal one. Garrison also expressed surprise, remarking that this type of crime was unusual for the district, one of Arkham's wealthiest areas. But he felt that this was an isolated incident and citizens of Uptown should not worry unduly. There's a lot of stuff in the paper today, huh? Okay. So now that we've looked at that, and like I said, we can, we can go back, and we probably will several times. We can go right over to... Armitage. And let's start a grain of evil. So the time tracker up here. After players advance to their first location, they will place the time tracker progress marker on day one morning space. So I guess in some of them, it's going to start other places maybe. Uh... Note, locations of which players cannot find a corresponding coordinate do not add to the final location count at the end of the investigation. Okay, uh, When moving to a location, the progress marker to the final space with the X marker on the time tracker player must investigate after reading that location. I mentioned that to you before. Uh, note on the use of bold task, text. To help new players become acquainted with the Mythos game system, we have printed names and named locations in bold when first presented on each page. This is not intended as a hint for the players. Remember that. Names and locations are presented in the manner simply so that they will be spotted more easily. And so afternoon, uh, as I was right, afternoon day five. Afternoon day five. There we go. And this will start here once we do our first investigation. There's old man Armitage right there. Armitage speculates. Unless there are surprises, I foresee visiting between six to eleven locations in order to answer most questions regarding my current mystery. However, you are a bit rusty, and it is possible that other interesting facts will present themselves in the course of your investigation. So take your time, if you think it necessary, but please wrap up your investigation by no later than day five afternoon. <sighs> okay, so this is... Starting a grain of evil, Investigation 1, Arkham, Massachusetts, June 30th. Responding eagerly to a telegram from your friend and mentor, you rush to the Miskatonic University Orn Library. There's a warm summer breeze gently rustling the trees, allowing the dappled sunlight to flicker lightly onto the streets. You cross the University Quadrant to reach the Great Gothic entrance. Professor Henry Armitage, Miskatonic's erudite librarian, greets you at the polished wooden door to his office. He leans on his cane, his wrinkled face crackling into a smile. Well then, I have an interesting little problem for us to explore. It has been some time since we exercised our deductive faculties, so how about a simple mystery to get you going again? Obviously, there's a chance that the event last evening involved more than a simple crime. But I do not believe that to be the case. However, my experience of last summer, one can never be too careful. He shudders visibly upon alluding to his confrontation with the Watleys in the village of Dunwich. 
Armitage settles in a chair, adjusting the violets on his desk. Inspector Garrison called over breakfast this morning and precipitated my note to your good self. It seems the inspector is at a loss and requires our specialist assistance. Last evening, as you may have noted from this morning's edition of the Arkham Advisor, last evening you may have noted from this morning's edition of the Arkham Adv Advertiser. Why am I trying to say that? A disturbance occurred on West High Street. It was a pleasant enough evening, and at seven o'clock the streets were relatively full. A young woman, well-dressed and of seemingly good health, collapsed on the sidewalk after emerging in a state of distress from the uptown park. A small crowd gathered to assist the young lady. An orderly from St. Mary's Hospital and his wife stooped to revive her, and the policeman was found. The orderly noticed a growing crimson stain seeped into the woman's blouse. He slit the garment free with his pocket knife. At once, the horrific nature of the wound in the lady's chest was apparent, and he stemmed the steadily increasing flow of blood. I am happy to report the disaster was averted by his quick thinking. An ambulance arrived in good time to take her to the hospital, and there they have managed to stabilize her condition. The librarian pauses to sip coffee from a delicate cup. The policeman assumed that this was an attack by an unknown assailant until the woman regained consciousness momentarily in the ambulance. She raved nonsensical syllables before crying out that the trees were alive. Alive! <sighs> Whilst dealing with the mysterious lady, the policeman was sharp-eyed enough to spot a man lingering in the cloud. Cloud lingering in the cloud. Now that's pretty suspicious. Whilst dealing with the mysterious lady, the policeman was sharp-eyed enough to spot a mine. A mine. Well, he certainly was quiet. A man lingering in the crowd of onlookers. The man was acting in a figurative way, watching the proceedings with a curious detachment. He was tall, over six feet, with a brown suit and dark hair and a very distinctive birthmark under his left eye. When the policeman called out to the man, he fled the scene. Being preoccupied with the lady, the policeman was not able to pursue and noted a description in his pocket book. Armitage sits back, the leather of his chair creaking. He steeples his fingers. The identity of both the woman and this mysterious figurative man remains a mystery. It is also for us to determine if there are any forces beyond the mundane at work. You would better get going. Let Garrison's men take care of the crime scene. They do get rather protective. Uh, before you set off, Armitage says, remember, if you need help, come see me at my home. I am unlikely to be in my office when working on a case. Okay, uh, I hope, hope nobody was, was reading ahead. Don't look at anything else. Uh, I should have mentioned that along with the spoiler earlier. Uh, we're just trying to read the sections we need to read. This game, if you may have noticed, then kind of plays like, it kind of plays like a, an endless quest book, so to speak, a, an open-ish world, a sandbox-ish kind of choose-your-own-adventure. So here we have the clues. He wants to know uh, who the lady is, who the guy was, uh, and if there was anything non-mundane uh, about what happened. Okay, so the the lady, nice lady, has gone to St. Mary's Hospital for treatment. And we have the detective's name. And there's no name of the ambulance driver or... Um, So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, and let's let's start with the police. Then from there, we'll go see what the hospital tells us. 
So Detective Garrison of Arkham PD. So what we're going to do is uh, Detective Garrison. I'll look his name up in the handy dandy directory. Garrison. C. Garrison. Detective Garrison of the Arkham PD. It doesn't uh, list the answer. There's only one Garrison here. D85. But do I go there or do I go to... Uh, so you see other things like utilities. So is there a police department listed here? Warehouse, utilities. Miskatonic University. They're going back to... Uh, transportation, sports stores, schools, clubs, uh, uh, residential, private, private company. I don't usually think the police, uh, it's been so long since I've, and I grew up with directories like this, it's been so long, aren't the police stuff usually in the beginning, not, not here. Boarding houses, charitable organizations, churches and funeral homes, churches abandon, oh, local culture, diners, financial institutions. Uh, doesn't say anything about police department. Police to medical facilities. St. Mary's Teaching Hospital. I want to go there. St. Mary's, because that's where uh, St. Mary's. Okay, so that's St. Mary's. So then we'll figure out the cop. So C11. C11. Let's see, C's down here. 9, 10, C11, right there. Right there, that building right there is the hospital. So that's where we'll be. All dressed uh, like a little monk dude. So C11. I am really glad this came with the game. So this also puts us morning of day one. We're at C11, 9, so 17, C11. C11, right here. Okay. Armitage, oh, I'm not doing his voice. Armitage often mentioned his friend, Dr. Vincent Sutton. Do you read Sutter Kane? No, sorry. <laughs> Dr. Vincent Sutton, as being a useful point of contact at the hospital. And you ask for the doctor at the front desk. The stern administration assistant frowns at your request, but dispatches a message to Sutton all the same. After you wait for what seems like an age, Dr. Sutton appears and greets you in a detached and professional manner. He's in his mid-forties, and his clean-shaven head amplifies the size of his thick horn-rimmed glasses. He allows a cursory nod when you tell him the reason for your visit. Of course, Armitage told me to expect you, he says. You explain that you are investigating the mysterious case of the woman brought into the hospital after the collapse in the park. It's not my case, but let's head up to the ward and see what we can find out. Sutton leads you through the white halls, weaving in and out of foot traffic. On the way up, he asks whether Armitage expressed interest in the lights dancing around at the nearby Emperor home. That was in the newspaper, right? Wasn't that a thing uh, to the properties? Yeah, right there, properties. Right where my thumb is. On the right. Yeah, that was in the paper. Hmm. Some of the hospital workers have seen them. And the old building is supposed to be abandoned. When you tell him that Armitage hadn't mentioned it, the doctor shrugs. You arrive at Ward 6, and Dr. Sutton makes his way down a row of beds, stopping at the foot of one containing an attractive young woman. The woman is sleeping soundly, and Sutton lifts the chart from the end of her bed and consults the notes. Okay, hold on. First of all, first of all, um, that's... 
I know it's not capitalized uh, to to give us a hint. It's the first time it's mentioned here, but he did mention it. So uh, let me just put uh, put Emperor Home Lights. C11 Dr. Sutton. See, he's if he's thinking Armitage would be interested in that. Okay. Let's see. We still don't have her name. She's listed here as a Jane Doe. Strange. The wound on her chest was deep, likely created by a sharp blade cutting into the flesh. However, five of the upper ribs on the left side were also fractured during her incident. It's as though someone it's as though someone removed or was attempting to remove something from her chest cavity. Hmm, most unusual. Dr. Noyes conducted the surgery to reset the bones. Speaking of usual, no one's cleared away a good deal of brownish colored mucus from the wound. He sent a sample to the lab. The lab assistant was sent to the university library to consult medical treaties as they were unsure of what the substance consisted. Pasquale knows about these things as well. As Sutton ends his speech, a nurse arrives to administer a shot. No sooner is the needle withdrawn from the woman's arm, she thrashes in her bed. Sutton doesn't look concerned. He pats the nurse on the shoulder. This discomfort will quickly pass. Then Jacqueline Lee wins. Just like the picture here. Let's try not to read anything. Then Jacqueline Lee, the woman's eyes snap open and she screams a piercing shriek. Sutton calls for help as the woman raves madness. Spitting dripping, uh, spittle dripping from her chin. Only at Bay Friars, but no, not there. The trees. Why? Why are they walking? Edward? Where, 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 is, where is my Edward? Why? Why the, is the, the trees have eyes? Edward? We were supposed to meet at the bell. Why are we here? Edward? It, it hurts. It, it hurts. Edward, stop it. Stop it. Sutton steps in and holds the woman's shoulders, talking to her in a calm, soothing voice. After a few minutes of delirium, the woman slips into a peaceful rest. She's really been through the mill, Sutton says. The wounds will heal just fine, given time. However, as you've seen firsthand, there there are some scars that are beyond our ability to repair. You've learned all you can from from the doctor. Her effects were taken for examination by the police. I think they were taken over to the criminologist, Dr. Corbett. Please let me know if you discover her identity. I'd like to comfort her family members. She needs someone to look out after her. Okay, 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 okay. This is, oh, wow, wow. Okay, I think a few things happen here. What do you think? Um. So, uh, C11 looks like it was potentially mm-hmm. fairly big so she's still a Jane Doe she's still a Jane Doe something was being ripped from her ribs Something ripped. I mean, literally ripped. <sighs> she survived. There was goo, right? Okay. Uh, brownish colored mucus. Yeah, brownish colored mucus. And... Um, was sent to University Library. And uh, Pasquale knows strange things. 
Pasquale knows strange. Um, now, now, here, 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 here. This is, this is some bat shit crazy stuff going on here. <clears throat> Only at Bray Fairs. I'm going to need more paper. I have more. Friars. Why did I say friars? Bray Fairs. Bray Friars. Bray Friars. Walking trees. Edward. Who's Edward? Edward. Supposed to meet at the bell. Where is the bell? Like lock? Mm. It hurts Edward. Stop it. Stop it. Wow. Edward, what did you do? Stop it. Time is still. Okay. Now her effects taken by the police. Okay. Jane's stuff with cops. Dr. Corbett. Corbett. Like Corvettes. Oh, okay. Wow, that was uh, that was a lot of information. Definitely looks like uh, the police. I got to head over to the police. So that means I have to find where the police... Now, I can definitely see an advantage uh, on one hand, although this is flowing like a, like a choose your own adventure and this quest book is flowing like a like a good one player experience but i could see with multiple players how like one person could have been already taking the notes i wouldn't have had to have gone through right now spending the time to do that while someone else could have already been looking up uh the police uh in here an op No. No, no police. It would have been up here. It would have been down here. It's, uh, maybe it's an A for Arkham. Arkham Police. Yeah, it's probably over here. Uh, public Library. Police Station D32. But the, but the library, too, wasn't there? Yeah, well, let's go to the police station. Let's go to the police station, D-32. Okay. Okay, D-32. We don't need to know anything going on over here. We don't need to know anything going on. D32. Don't know where the D district is, right? Oh, D, it's up here. 33, 32, it's right, right here, North Peabody Avenue, in between East uh, Cure Street and uh, East. High line D32. Not that it really matters. I'm just doing this because I'm an old school gamer and I like to see a mini on the table. <laughs> okay. Well, let's. Uh... Hasn't told me to get a card yet. D32. One of Garrison's sergeants, the young 
Mickey Tull saunters over to you and attempts to make himself useful in his superior's absence. Uh, you're, you're looking for Garrison? He, he's out on a bust over at some, uh, some diner this uh, side of the river. You ask him if there's any further information regarding the suspected attack on the woman in Uptown Park. Oh, well, uh, not, not, not much to add. Uh, the lads have been going door to door. Uh, the only odd thing uh, any of them have reported is some members of the um, Silver Twilight Lodge uh, hanging around the old emperor home. Make a mental note of that. You might want to talk to Sebastian Lyman. Uh, who is the policeman who first vis Oh, that's... Why is that in quotes? That shouldn't be in quotes. Who is the policeman who first visited the scene in Uptown? Uh, that'd be uh, Matthew Keane. He he's not on shift today, uh, I I'm afraid. Okay. Whew, okay. Okay, so a little bit here. Officer Garrison is out. Officer Garrison is out. the diner on this side of river so a diner somewhere up here aha uh -huh. okay so silver twilight lodge members near at Emperor home. Talk to Sebastian Lyman. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did forget to put this now. This is uh, so you can see this is afternoon day one. Who was the policeman who first visited the scene in Uptown? That'd be Matthew Keen. Okay. Okay. Ooh, this is a... Uh, hmm. This is a side mission. <laughs> the Emperor Home. This is a side mission, I think, in a sense. Put it in an RPG sense right so let's see that's my thinking voice so i guess matthew right we should go see matthew keen Matthew Keen. Well, let's uh, look up Matthew Keen. Handy dandy little book. M. Keen. There's only one M. Keen. That's at D67. D67. Sixty-seven. We are now in the evening time. At D sixty-seven. So he's over here. And of course, some Independent Square. Oh, that must be nice. Sorry. Officer Matthew Keene's house is a small but tidy affair in the East Kerwin Street, facing Independent Square. 
Your knocks are promptly greeted by a muscular young man with a clipped mustache. He is dressed well. It is likely he just arrived home from church. That's pretty late. Oh, well. Keen invites you inside where his wife pours you a cup of coffee. Keen relates the tale almost precisely as it was described to you by Armitage. Is there anything else? Uh, oh, that's us again. Oh, so it is putting us in quotes. See, I didn't even... Don't put us in quotes. Don't put us in quotes. You ask if there's anything else he can add. Mm, not really. I'm sorry if you've wasted a trip, but uh, I always try to make my reports as detailed as I possibly can. The orderly who helped uh, attend to the lady, that's uh, Lawrence Hetfield. He and his wife Emily live on the southwest street over up the French Hill. I know that they took the injured lady to St. Mary's Hospital, and Garrison had me deliver her belongings to Herbert Colbert, the criminal, the consulting criminologist. I know that this is uh, New England, but you know this guy just this kid transferred from from New York City, and that's it. Okay, that's it. That's it. Um, let's see then. What, what what did I really pull from this? Few things. I got the name now of uh That'll be Lawrence Hetfield. Uh, he was the uh, the orderly. Mm. Wife Emily. Herbert Corbett. Oh, I already had that. I didn't have the first name. Now I got the first name. He is the consulting criminologist. All right, let me go find uh, this uh, this Lawrence Hetfield. Lawrence Hetfield. Where could you be? L. F. 64. F. 64. That's only over here. No, it's like, I can't find it. That's good enough. <laughs> He's over here somewhere. They're in this neighborhood. Not wasting time on that. Uh, oh, wait, let's say F64. Oh, wait. F61. 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 Is that also right on the same page? No. It's not looking good then. Lawrence Setfield. Lawrence Hetfield. Hetfield Lawrence F61. Oh, oh, this is D. D. Let me see if there's an F61 here. F61. What do you know? Wham, bam. Thank you, Sam. Keen. Thank you, Keen. Thank you, Keenly. Kind of stranger. This is helping me not see anything else, I think. The home of Lawrence and Emily Hetfield is a tidy, mid-terraced property. You ring the doorbell, and you are met by a plain-looking middle-aged woman. She confirms that she is Emily Hetfield, but she has nothing to add to the story that Armitage related to you. She closes the door abruptly as if in a hurry. To get to her cult meeting? That's it. I got this figured out. Lawrence and Emily, uh... Jumped her in the park, uh, captured her one night, put something in her that needed to be hatched, uh, then tried extracting it from the park. People were coming. 
So then they pretended to be, uh, they let her go, but came back around the other end and uh, pretended to, to help her. This is getting com- com- complicated, isn't it? Okay, so maybe that's not it. That's Maybe that's not it. But she's, she's Emily. Emily, Emily, Emily. What are you hiding, Emily? Come clean. I'll find out the truth. So that was a wasted morning. That was a wasted morning. F sixty one nothing. Don't like having to make that mark. Okay. Um time to go check out Dr. Corbett Herbert. Yeah. Doing stuff with the cops, Dr. Herbert Corbett. I thought they said he was at the library. Uh, University Library. Okay, so let's go see where University Library is. The University Exhibit Museum. University Shoe Store, the shop, the spa, was the University Library. They mean University Museum? Or, uh, Arkham University. It's Arkham University Library. No, it's not Arkham Public Library. Well, that's what they said, right? Uh, the other thing is, you can't. You, you're not supposed to go back and relook. That's why you're supposed to take notes. So, um, University. Brownish colored, oh, the brownish colored mucus was taken to University Library. Missouri at the police department. Arkham PD. Officer Keen home. Home. The cops, Dr. Corbett. Oh, let me see if Dr. Corbett is here. Herbert Corbett. Cochran, Coffee, Coffin, Coffin, Cohen, Colby, Cole, Coleman, College Barbershop, Colton, Columbia. Uh, University Library. It's not under library. Okay, you know what? Uh, let me go. Let me go back to something else here. Let me go back to something else here. So, Pasquale knows strange things. Pasquale knows strange things. Oh, wait a second. The Armitage gives uh, gives us uh, some uh, allies to go check out, and actually, look at this, Dr. Herbert Corbett. So he's at D forty five. So that's where we're gonna go. We're gonna go to D forty five.
Corvettes. Okay, so back to D. Forty-five. That's right down there. Okay. D forty-five. You rap on the door of Herbert Corbett's lab, and after a moment, you are greeted by his helper. He recognizes you and shows you through to Corbett's workroom. The workman in his the workroom in his chemistry lab uh, with the workroom is a chemistry lab with several Bunsen burners blazing away. Herbert is huddled over a bench. On his head, he wears a magnifying apparatus, which he lifts to greet you. Welcome to my criminology laboratory. He shakes. Does that go down? So oh, it goes down the whole thing there. Okay. He uh, shakes your hand. Sensing that this man is kept very busy, you don't waste any time with pleasantries and ask about the attack on the woman in Uptown Park. Ah, yes, the strange one. I, I believe that I can shed some light on her lodgings if, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if uh, nothing else. Uh, Corbett reveals a brown cardboard box. Uh, Garrison left me uh, this to examine. Uh, the blouse, as you can see, is saturated with uh, blood from uh, a wound made in her chest. Uh, I was uh, interested to know that the blouse was uh, not damaged before she was administrated uh, first aid. Uh, this, uh, you know, suggests that the uh, blouse was put on the woman uh, after the injury occurred. Uh, um, hmm. Well, um, more uh, revealing... Uh, is the, the, well, the lady's purse, which uh, contains her address. Uh, here. He rummages in the box. Uh, this is a bill from uh, Renee's boarding house. Uh, the receipt confirmed that uh, she had paid for the next month's rent in advance. Uh, 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 look, uh, there's a, uh, a receipt as well uh, from a bookstore. There we go. Meredith's used books. $3 received with thanks... For Coolidge's collected poems to be inscribed on the inside cover with To Edward with all my love. Ooh, okay. Okay, the nutty professor helped us out a little bit there. Let's see. Um, okay, so I uh, don't know how long that was out for. Sorry, uh, but yeah, we are just taking the notes from Corbin. Uh, the first thing I wrote down was that he claims that she was dressed after the rib uh, breakage. So, but he also found out that she where she was staying. She was staying at Renee's boarding house. Jane Doe stayed at Renee's boarding house. And uh, a receipt for Meredith's used books three dollars received the thanks for cool cool ridges cool ridges collected poems inscribe I'm definitely going to need more more paper inscribe with to Edward with all my love hmm how is that, that strange right because that's one of the things she was uh, uh, Edward she called out to she said it hurts 
Uh, it hurts Edward. Stop it. Stop it. They're supposed to meet at the bell. Okay. And uh, now she has a receipt from Meredith's used bookstores, Coolidge's collected poems, Edward to Edward with all my love. Hmm. Also, knowing Lovecraft and Howard and others that wrote in the mythos, I know that books and uh, poems can sometimes be very, very evil. Yeah. Okay, that's about all I got from that. But that's still pretty good. So now we're going to be heading over to Renee's boarding house. That's for sure. That will be uh, for the afternoon. Oh, that was the afternoon because the morning was was spent. Uh, so we started here at C11. D23. No, I mean D32. D67. F61, which was nothing. D45, which was just now Corbett. So now we're heading over to Renee's. Rini, Renny, gotta find it. I'll find it. That'll be an R. Rini's boarding house, F sixteen. F sixteen. Rini, how do I spell that? I don't care. I don't. Not for my notes. F sixteen. F six. Here we go. F sixteen. You don't. Nobody needs to see nothing over there. We're up here, and I don't even want to see this stuff here. We're just concentrating on this because this doesn't go up here, does it? Yes, it does. Yeah, of course it does. Of course it does. That's good enough. I told you, it's the first time I've gone through it. You can tell by the pages. Okay. F-16. The three-story Clapper board house on Lit Street is neat and presentable. A small sign advertising that Rennie's boarding house has vacant rooms. You are greeted at the front desk by one of Rennie's twins, Thomas, a friendly man in his thirties with a mop of dark hair. Are you wanting a room to rent? You describe the woman in the hospital who was attacked, explaining that she had a receipt for payment for one of his rooms. Well, that sounds very much like Martha Modine. She's been with us for over a year now. I believe that she works over on Main Street in one of the stores. I do hope she's okay. She's got a kind heart, always willing to do a kindness for a stranger. She's smitten as well with having recently fallen in love with a man named Mr. Hartwell. Don't care for him too much. Surly. Eyes make my dogs bark every time he's around. My dogs never bark. Clearly young Martha can see redeeming qualities, I suppose. You ask You ask if you may see Martha's room, and he agrees. Striding past you, brandishing a pass key, Martha's room is modest but well kept and pleasantly decorated. On a small bookcase there are several works of poetry. A photograph and a frame on the mantel catches your eye. You walk over and examine it. It is a picture of a lady and a gentleman, and there can be no doubt that this is the woman that Armitage described. The couple gazes lovingly at one another. With that faraway, dreamy look of movie romance. The man has a small birthmark under his left eye. Thomas says, That's them, Martha and Hartwell, though he looks as though butter wouldn't melt in his mouth unlike her you ask for more information on hartwell and Rini tells you that hartwell has been seeing martha for several weeks and that he has a house on the lower south side on eat on east saltonstall street it's that for that encounter all right now we know who the man is we know who she is we edward we have a we have a, a last name for edward a last name for edward I don't have to use any cards yet. 
Might not be for the first game. So very much like Martha Modine. Jane Doe is Martha Modine. I don't think the very first game out there would give such a false red herring. I, I don't think so. Seeing Mr. Hartwell, who I believe is Edward. Several weeks, for several weeks. Thomas Rini's dog barks at Hartwell. Only Hartwell. Because <laughs> the dog senses evil. Wait a second. What if, what if, what if, what if Edward Hartwell, right? What if, what if, what if Hartwell is Edward, Edward Hartwell, and, um, Lawrence Hetfield and his wife Emily. What if the three of them are all in on this together in their own little cult? That doesn't explain what was done to her, whether it was him, them, or, or something else. I'll find out what that stuff was. Already. Oh, no, that was Corbett. Okay. That was a good evening investigation. Well, that was seven. Wait, I missed one, right? So that was uh, C11, D32, D67, F61, D45. Oh, yeah, F16. Okay. But I okay, I didn't get any information on where where to go to, although I do have uh they say where he is. I'm not gonna go check this guy out yet. No. Um let's see. Amelia Sargent is a library at the Orn. No, I don't need to go see the Orn anywhere at the Orn. William Coffin is a shadow. Oh, wait. Um, who is this? Is the guy that was mentioned? Of all things in the occult, when you can't find good information in the library, Pasquale Fenton, L4, as well as an occult spirit. I'm going to go check him out at L4. L4, L4. L4, and this guy's name is uh, Pasquale Fenton. L, 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 L. L, beautiful, L, L4, okay, L4, L, L, L4, oh, geez, it's right there, okay, uh, that was easy, L4, and uh, we'll uh, get rid of that there, okay, that works. Armitage has little good to say about the odious little man that is Pasquale Fenton, Arkham's most celebrated occultist. He and Armitage have had a lifelong rivalry. Too much of the showman and, some might argue, charlatan for most tastes. However, Pasquale manages to make an impressive living. His mansion is tawdry and garnished, decorated with a vast collection of the occult, including deformities in jars, unusual medical devices, and jewelry that evokes satanic ritual. He invites you in cordially enough 
but the smirk that appears on his arrogant face when he learns the reason behind your call raises his hackles. Oh, so now I am uh, consulted on this matter? I would have thought the bumbling idiot Garrison would have come himself rather than sending his protégé. Biting your tongue, you explain the wound on the young lady and why the police would be concerned. Pasquale realizes that he is being a bit nasty and changes his tone. Trees. She went on about being attacked by trees, did she? I would suggest that you have stumbled upon cultists of Shubinath. Also known as the black goat with a thousand young. There are mutterings of certain dark rituals that, uh, well, uh, her followers use a sacrificial victim to host the spawn from the unholy seed to infants. The wound of this woman may be that, or maybe she's just insane. The mad abound in Arkham, and as I know you have heard from these stories, that would be a better guess. Pascal pauses and you encourage him to tell you more about the Shib Nugarath. He is a bit reluctant to share his knowledge, but continues. A spawn of a Shib Nugarath is uh, slashed free from the flesh of the host and brought into the world to wreck whatever horrors you can do to turn a page. And uh, to wreck whatever horrors it may. Investigate the witch cults in Arkham if you truly want to go down this path. It is very well that it may be that she lady who was attacked is delusional from some poison, or she made it all up altogether. You ask what Spawn is likely to do if indeed it has been born into this world. Pascal bites his lower lip. For now, nothing. The Spawn will take a number of years to fully mature. The texts speak of these creatures often attacking domesticated animals, particularly dogs and cats. Even in seed form, the animals, they can uh, sense the uh, presence of this evil. With that, you thank Pasquale for his insights and leave. Okay, this is now this is getting to the Catholian stuff, my friend. We're talking Shibnugarath and 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 and, and the, Yes, okay. Um, Shub Nugra Shub 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 can never spell any of these darn things. Who can? There it is. Shub. Black go to the woods. This is the stuff. Spawn. Ritual. Um, use a sacrificial victim. Okay, so so Edward is uh, is the leader of these guys. I'm convinced of that so far. <laughs> um, animals hate them. They eat animals. Animals, animals hate. Seed form. That was another thing. Seed form. Oh. Okay, now, uh, now, 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 Silver Lodge, we'll go back to this now, side quest, Silver Twilight Lodge, uh, members near or at the Emperor home, talk to Sebastian Lyman. I'm going to go talk to Sebastian Lyman now. If I can find him. That's the name I was given, right? Sebastian. Speak to Sebastian Lyman. There is no Sebastian Lyman. 
This is a is a Scott L, a Selton, a Seton L. Oh, dummy. Lyman. Sebastian. L18. I'm a dummy. All right, big dummy. Let's get going here. Let's get going here. Uh, well, I'm, I'm just wondering now. Do I do I want to go down this side quest? I mean, the Silver Lodge. Yeah, I better. I better. All right, L eighteen. Lyman. Sebastian. L eighteen. L eighteen, right there. There you go. We don't need to know about the short dressed lady here either. Sebastian Lyman, Armitage's mole inside the Silver Twilight Lodge, can be seen through the window of his home. You tap three times on the porch screen door as previously instructed. And a moment later, the immaculately groomed man comes to the door, absent mindedly twirling his waxed mustache. He glances furiously around to ensure that there's no one else in sight before waving you inside. I'm assuming that you are here about the Emperor home. Cole Sandford and his inner circle have been there almost every night this week. There, we're attempting to contact something, something from beyond. You get my meaning. But don't ask me what. I know better than to ask. What I don't know, however, is that they failed. What I do know, however, is not that I don't know. I do know. I do know very well. Don't tell me what I do and do not know. <laughs> Sorry. What I do know, however, is that they failed. Even the beyond apparently doesn't want to be bothered by their likes. He continues. Carl was in a filthy mood when I saw him today. Thankfully, when he descends into one of his melon colonies, melon colonies, <laughs> that's where you send all the melons. Thankfully, he decided, thankfully, when he descends into one of his melon colliers, he hides away for a while, clinging to his secondary interest, performing the old drink or two or three or four, if you know what I mean. I think they're going to leave the emperor home alone for a time being. He'll be back to his tricks again soon. Now you have to go. Carl could surprise me with a visit today. If you were caught here, that would be the end of both of us, old chap. Um, that seems like a dud. Let me see. Silver Twilight. Emperor's home. Emperor home. Failed summoning. Okay. Oh, I forgot that would put me down here for the afternoon. That's right. So now, now where to go now? Uh, I know I could go check out this guy. Oh, wait, why don't I uh, check out Meredith's used books? I'm going to go check out Meredith's used books. Where is that? Oh, there we go. That's an M50. I haven't moved the guy around in a while, have I? <laughs> M50. 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 Meredith's used books. Oh, 
Oh, Jesus, right there. Okay, 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 okay. That's something I read now. No. Does it go around to the next end? Like one line. Like one line. You quickly thank Mr. Meredith and leave. Okay. Bullshit. The door to Meredith's used books is locked. Unabashed, you try knocking and are rewarded after a few moments by a friendly large man in a sharp tweed suit. His gray hair is thinning, but his eyes twinkle with a youthful look. You explain your reason for stopping by. He takes a receipt from you and turns it over in his hand. Yes, definitely one of ours. Come, come in for a moment, won't you? And I'll uh, check the ledger. Mr. Meredith leads you inside the musty-smelling shop. Shelves cover every wall and groan under the weight of printed literature. He smartly rounds the counter and pulls out a worn book. Flipping through several pages, his fingers scan the columns of names with practiced ease. Oh, yes, here we are. Coolidge's collected tomes to be inscribed in calligraphy, oh, calligraphy, with a personal message. We charge $2.50 the young lady in question. Yes, sir. Martha is her name. And Edward is her betrothed. Isn't that special, Edward is her betrothed? Uh, Edward Hartwell. Yes, Edward Hartwell. You thank him on the next page, as all says, as you thank him. Okay. Um, that is the evening. I'm going to double check. I'm going to double check, make sure I'm not behind one. So i got to start wrapping things up. It's getting near time. Okay, so we had C11. D32, D67, F61, D45, F16. Then we had L4, L18, and that was M50 right there. Okay. Hmm. The receipt said three dollars paid receipt. He ripped them off. He's ripping off somebody. He's cooking the books. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is uh, Mr. Meredith is uh, cooking the books here. Because the receipt that Martha had said three dollars, and he's saying two fifty. Hmm. He's in the cult too. Yep. There's a whole bunch of them. There's a whole sleeper cell cult here. Of the black gold of the woods. I'm, I'm just saying. <sighs> okay. Let's go back to uh, some of our notes here. Still, okay, she's not Jane Doe anymore. We know that uh, that she is... Uh, that she is... Um, what did I write it? Mr. Hart, no. Jane, oh, Jane Doe is Martha Modine. Huh. Modine. I wonder if there's a Modine listed here. Oh, well, no, she's at the boarding house. Duh! And I know about him. I know I can go look him up. Uh, something ripped through the ribs. At the university library. At the university library. Where the hell is the university library? Where the hell is the university library? Oh, Arkham University. Arkham Arkham Library, right? So that's got to be it. It's got to be Arkham Library. And there is no Arkham Library listed here. Arkham Public Library. I don't feel like that's it. I don't feel like that's it. Hmm. Oh, hey, wait a second. Wait a second. Something just... Uh... 
this, wait a second, there's one. No, I don't know what that is. Bray Fryer. Bray Fryer. There's no Bray Fryer here. But while I was looking at, while I was looking at this, look, Bell Cafe. Bell Cafe, M42, right? Supposed to meet at the Bell. Ah, that's not the German Dyke Lock, which hasn't been built in this time period yet, the 1920s, 30s. But it does mean the Bell, meet at the Bell, meet at the cafe, meet at a, at a club, at a, at, a, at a bar, at a restaurant. We're going to meet at a bookstore. We're going to meet at the Bell. This is the only thing Bell here. Wait a second. This, I'm getting, I'm not I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. If this is a wild goose chase, I'm, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the bell first thing in the morning, day four. First thing in the morning, day four. I'm going to the bell. So, Bell Cafe is M42. M42. Oh, it's right nearby. Bell Cafe. Um. Betrothed Ed and Martha. Uh, M42, B42. M42, M42. Jesus, yeah, it is right there. Oh, that's like most of this. Shoot, okay. And we already read M50, so I don't have to hide that. Oh, I don't feel like I'm, I'm onto something here. An hour and a half in. The Bell Cafe is a homely establishment. I think they mean homely, like home-ish. It looks like home, feels like home. Not like we would say homely nowadays and, you know, think like homeless person or something. The Bell Cafe is a homely establishment. All wood paneling with a quaint furniture and a ginger ham. With quaint furniture and ginger ham patterned cloth. The smells of baking fill the small eatery, and it is far from unpleasant. Stomach rumblings, you approach the counter and ring the bell. You are greeted by a thin, mousy woman. Her sleeves are rolled up, her apron tied tight, and her cheeks are rosy from extortion. Can I help you? Did you want some coffee or food? Not wishing to impose and resisting the urge to pause for a meal, you explain your purpose for the interruption. At your description of the woman who was attacked, the cafe owner becomes concerned. Well, I must say that sounds very much like one of my regulars, Martha Modine. She's a lovely woman, always wanting to help those less fortunate and very much in love. She would often come in with her sweetheart, Edward, to discuss poetry and the arts. She gestures to a cozy-looking booth near the window. They always sit there. I can't believe that someone would hurt Martha. She is well-liked. You ask about... Ah, see, I was just... Right? I was just said that. You... Ask about the Bayfriars that Martha had mentioned. What? Bayfriars Church? I think it's abandoned, isn't it? I know Martha was always keen to help out the destitute and homeless, so maybe that's why she went there. Don't know. The woman shifts her eyes back to the kitchen, and you realize that she is antsy to get back to work. With words of gratitude, you head back to the street. Ah, oh, so there is a, Bri a, a Bayfriars. It's Bay Bayfriars Church. And while I was looking through this earlier with you guys, there was something about abandoned uh, churches or something here. Was that the beginning, or the, I guess that was near the end? Abandoned. I guess I even made fun of it. I, I made some mention of it. Not graveyards, schools, sports, transportation, warehouses, utilities, medical facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Bay Friars Church F14. Now, oh, 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 oh. 24 hours to go. Uh, uh, Bay Friars, it was uh, F14. Bay Friars Church F14. Bay Friars. F-14. Ooh, something's cooking. Something's cooking. That ain't 
And I mean, uh, the Bell Cafe. F14, C, F12, F. Well, that's not a lot. It's not a lot at all. F14. I try not to read anything else. I don't have to. Like any of that crap. Okay. Bay Friars Church is clearly abandoned from some time. There are a number of vagrants clustered around an oil drum fire. One man spits menacingly into the fire, eyeing you with his one good eye. You mingle with the vagrants, and eventually they open up. You describe the woman who was injured, and they tell you that woman matches their description, came by early with charitable gifts and food and clothing of them. I believe her name was Martha, the one-eyed man sputters. I didn't get a good look at her face on account of, well, you know, one good eye. That was a waste. Learned nothing, nothing. I mean, if I didn't know who she was, I would have been like, oh, great, her name is Martha now, I know. Uh, but that was a freaking waste. Okay, I might have to just bite the bullet here and finally just, finally just go to Edward. Okay, Hartwell, not Hartnell, like the first doctor, after who, Hartwell. Hartwell, E. Edward, L26. L26, L26, L26. L26. Edward. Okay, L26. On the next page. On the next page, L26 and 4M5. Yep, L. L26. Oh, he's got a lot going on here. So I came here first. If Woody had gone straight to the police, this would never have happened. Actually, wasn't it feds? If Woody had gone straight to the feds, this would never have happened. Who remembers Woody Woodpecker? All this stuff is in my way. Okay, here we go. L26. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Edward Hartwell's home is average and unassuming. A cat draws your attention as you step forward to knock on the door. The mangy feline is backing away from a basement window. The poor creature's eyes are wide, and its back is arched. Hair standing on end, it's hissing in a most fearsome way. That's an unfriendly cat. Oh, there's something in that window, right? You knock on the door, and when there is no reply, you knock again. As minutes tick by, you decide that a closer inspection of the rear of the property might be in order. After all, if this lady was injured, there's a chance that someone may have attempted to injure Edward Hartwell as well. The yard at the back of the building is well tended, and the fence is new and painted. The back door is unlocked. Stealing inside quickly so you're not observed, you find yourself in a clean and tidy kitchen. The cutlery and plates are neatly washed and stacked in a drying board. The attention of tidiness continues in each room. A pile of mail addressed to Edward Hartwell sits on a small table near the front door. One note reads, Edward, I arrive Sunday by train and will meet you at B's Diner. Remember, remember the cat you discovered? Remember the cat? You discover a small cellar door in the kitchen and head down to the basement where a bare flickering bulb illuminates a small workman. Workroom. Not a small workman. Hey, buddy, I'm working down here. Uh, a small workroom. Discarded under a workbench is a small, broken packing crate stamped with the Miskatonic Museum's address. <gasps> oh, I completely forgot the news article here about the theft. Oh, my God. Oh, what's wrong with me? Okay, on the bench lies a wickedly sharp, straight-bladed dagger etched with unusual symbols on its wooden hilt. A razor-sharp blade reveals flecks of red stain. Next to the dagger is a bowl, also stained dark red. Your stomach lurches at the uncomfortable thought of these implements that the injured the... Uh... Your stomach lurches at the uncomfortable thought that these are the implements that injured the woman at the hospital. A few pieces of old parchment with indecipherable crabbed handwriting lie scattered nearby. 
Placed next to the parchment is an open wooden box containing four large grain seeds. Each is about the length of your fingernail and jet black. Leaving everything as you found it, you exit the property the way you came. Ooh, whoa, okay, so tons of stuff going on there, all right? Um, Bee's Diner. Bee's Diner. Oh, and I think I'm down here, right? I think I'm down there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep. I know. They're by threes. I could have done it by threes. Three, six, nine. I I'm just eyeballed it. I know. But I didn't. So leave me alone. Bees Diner. Um, seeds, secret, hidden, basement, black seeds, yeah, um, uh, oh, 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 okay, um, missing, Miskatonic Museum Dagger Blood on it And there's a bowl Also with blood on it Bees Diner I gotta go to Bees Diner Anything else here I should remember? Uh, so it's hidden under a workbench. I don't think I remember that. Yeah, very stamped with that. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, the next morning, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Bee's Diner. Oh, two more encounters. Bee's Diner. Well, I, I think I will. It's, it's got to be in here, right? Bee's Diner. Bee's Diner. D nine. D9. D9. Oh. I don't know what was up with that book. Okay. D9. D9, 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 D9. Okay, ready? We're almost there. It looks as though you missed the action by the time you... Oh, wait a second! Bee's Diner? This is where... When I went to the, the police station, he said that uh, Garrison was busting a diner in, on that side of the river. Oh, this is what was going on. <laughs> it looks like you've missed the action by the time you arrive at B's Diner. A police wagon pulls away as you turn the corner. Wow, that was that was uh that was one, two, that was four days ago, and they're just leaving now. Slow police department. That's why there's so many cult activity going on. The detective greets you with a nod. We got him. Thanks to the tip from Armitage. Edward Hartwell matches the description of the man that Keen saw fleeing the scene of the attack last night. I placed Edward under arrest, but he wasn't being particularly cooperative and the things got violent. That said, I think he's going to end up in the sanitarium, be sure. The nonsense, he was babbling. They overturned chairs and smashed cockery, crockery, not cockery, not like little statues of roosters. The overturned chairs and smashed crockery scattered around the diner tell the tale of his arrest. You ask if Hartwell has anything suspicious in his possession. Perhaps. He came in the diner with a small package, according to a waitress, but he met a man called Victor and gave the package to that gentleman. The waitress overheard Hartwell's companion saying he had to rush off so that he didn't miss his train. Wait a second, Victor. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Hold on. Garrison appears upset that Hartwell's 
Contact evaded capture. My jurisdiction ends in the city limits. That package is someone else's concern now. With a twinkle in Garrison's eyes, suggesting that he's intended to follow the man with the package, he tips his hat, turns to speak with one of his officers. Do you realize that Garrison wouldn't leave a loose end like this to chance? Um, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Victor, Victor, Victor. I thought... Bostodian Academic arrives in Arkham. Mr. Victor Ingram is scheduled to arrive in Arkham any day now. A senior curator from the Boston Museum, Victor Ingram, is scheduled to visit the Miskatonic Exhibit Museum. Whilst in town, he is due to judge the exhibit exhibit competition between the junior curators of our museum. The curator with the best exhibit goes the honor of taking the vacant role of senior curator and is expected that the competition will be fierce. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, my friends. This adventure that I'm just finishing up now is, is one of many, I think eight or nine adventures or so in here. Uh, and you can do them individually. Uh, you can do uh, this one and then that one, but to get the true sense of the of this game is is to go through this book in order. In order, there's a, an overall campaign, and I have just stumbled upon. <coughs> pardon me, I have just stumbled upon the key, the seed of this, and that's Victor Ingram, because Victor Ingram is this guy right here. He is the man that Hartwell met at B's diner, and he gave the package to him. Interesting. Interesting. So for my last move, I think I got everything figured out. For my last move, where would I like to go? And uh, I think the University Exhibit Museum. University Exhibit Museum, C24. So that's the last place I'm going to go is C24. For my last... Oh. Oh! I'm finally going to find out about the book! <laughs> C24. Oh, oh, um, um. Victor... Victor, is that right? Victor, Victor Ingram. Ingram took package from Hartwell. And now C24. University. Exhibit Museum. Okay. Let's see what we can find out. Because this is now the last segment of the investigation. You see that there? Sure you can. The University Exhibit Museum is closed. So the iron-studded doors are fastened tight. On a hunch, you head around to the side of the building to a loading dock. There are several workers and a policeman lingering in the dock. The policeman is taking statements from two men dressed as watchmen. To one side, nervously pacing, is an academic type in dust-covered suit. You approach the academic who introduces himself as Dr. Robert Gladding, a junior curator with the museum. I can't believe that this has happened. This exhibit was going to be the thing that secured my job of senior curator. Now Richard is going to get that post for sure. As he, as he wrings his hands, you lean. You learn that both he and Richard Jedry, the other junior curator, have been competitive for the vacancy of the senior position. Both were given exhibits to display. A well-respected curator is arriving from Boston to present the board with his opinion as to which man should be promoted. That guy already left. Victor's gone. He got his package from Hartwell and he's gone. Who would steal a 12th century ritual bowl except someone wishing to sabotage my exhibits? It's not worth anything to anyone, despite its age. 
There are very few people who even knew of the bowl's arrival, just as the University Museum staff and the staff of rare books and maps. What will Mr. Ingram think? I'd better send a message over to Bancroft Arms to let him know. With that, Gladding hurries away. Glad hey, Gladdings! Glad well, Gladdings! Glad hey, buddy. What the hell did you run away for? I could have told you where it was. I just found it. It was at Hartwell's place. Hartwell just got picked up by the police because I just came from there. And I think I got this solved. I do. I had to take it all the way to the end. But I got my notes. I got my theories. Got my ideas. Got my concepts. So now, now we're going to have to put it all to the test. Since I am at the finish, the last investigation, the last segment, we, uh, we're going to go back over here. Ooh, a supplement counter. Don't know about that. Don't know about that. Um, so now, here we are. Armitage has questions for us. Have you been paying attention? Have you been taking notes? Okay, so what was the name of the woman who collapsed on the street? Well, we know that. Her name was Martha Modine. Her name was Martha Modine. We know that. Who was the suspicious character that made a quick exit from the scene of the crime? Well, that was her fiancé. That was her fiancé. Um, Edward Hartwell. Edward Hartwell. How did the woman come by her injury? Hmm. Okay. This is where we start entering Crazyville. Okay. Well, not crazy if you're in the middle of a Lovecraft story. So, I believe it was her, uh, her, 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 her boyfriend, her fiancé, her beau. I believe it was Edward. And uh, I think he was working with a few other people. And uh, according to according to the Frenchman Pasquale, they were trying to bring in a spawn of Shubnigraf, the black goat of the woods, into this world. And uh, it, it was somehow inside her body, and and they needed uh, this ritual bowl that they stole from the museum to, uh, and then the dagger to carve it out of her chest. So that's what caused, that's what caused her injury. What is the danger in the park? I don't know what the danger in the park is. Um, I will say cults. Let me think about this. You see, dogs don't like Hartwell. Cats don't like the... The spawn. No animals like the spawn. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's dangerous about the park other than parks are dangerous at night, especially in uh, the 1920s and 30s. So what is the danger of the park? Uh, cult? Will be my answer. What was stolen from the museum? The museum uh, was stolen from the museum was the bowl. Uh, maybe the dagger as well. Oh, the bowl. No, that's what they said. They didn't say a dagger. They just said a bowl was stolen. Uh, so a bull. Who is the out of town? Who is the out of town cultist of Shub Nigrath? I'm gonna go out here on a limb here and say that this is uh, Victor. Uh, Victor, what's his name? Uh, uh, Victor. Uh, and didn't I just write it down? The guy from Victor Ingram. I'm gonna say it's Victor Ingram. Victor Ingram. Why did the cat hiss at the wall at the east? Salt and Stall Street. Uh, that's where uh, Edward Hartwell lived. And we were told by Pasquale that even the seeds of the spawn of Shubnigraf uh, can cause animals to uh, be filled with hatred. So that's why. Who did the hospital workers see on the top floor of the em Emperor home? Oh, did I write down the name? That's the guy from the Silver Twilight. It was, um, God, I did not write the name. Sebastian Lyman was the guy that gave me the information. It was the head of the cult who's failed summoning, and I didn't write his name down. Damn it. What was Barclay Rudker up to? Oh, wait a second. That's Barclay Rudker. That's Barclay Rudker. What was he up to? He was trying to summon uh, another worldly beast, an elder being, an old one, uh, into this world, and he failed. What was the name of the late night graveyard visitor? Hmm. I don't have a lot of names to go on, so I will I will I will uh, I will say Victor again. We'll go with Victor Ingram for that one as well. 
That was a guess. Why did the late night movie visitor visit at night? What was he doing? Um, I, I know nothing about this. I I investigated nothing about anything going on in a cemetery. Nobody, even, I didn't even notice any clues that sent me that way. So what was he doing? Well, you know, you want to say grave robbing, but I think that's a little, that's, that's just the easy way to go. Let's see, he was um, summoning. No, they were doing summoning at the, at the emperor house. Uh, a protection spell. Who's doing a protection spell? Where's the world word scrolled on the emperor home? I, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't delve that far into the emperor home. The word is um, word is the bird, and bird is the word. No. Um. What is the word? I have no idea. I will guess and say, and say, um, von Junt. Von Junt. So now, is this where the answers are? Oh, yes, this is where the answers are. So let's see how we did here. And let's see if I remember what I just said. You'll keep me honest. Thank you. Okay, what, what is the name of the woman, Ma uh, Martha Modine? So that, that's good. That's, that was right. So that scored us three points. Uh, three points. Who was the suspicious character that made... Okay, we were right about that. Five points. How did the woman come by injury? The ritual extract. I, I said it much, uh, you know, uh, with a lot more, a lot more verbose. But I was correct. Five points. See, now this is the thing. If you're playing this with other players, you can all keep your own separate notes, come up with your own decisions, write down your own answers, and then you can score against each other. So in that way, this becomes a sort of semi-cooperative game. Four. What is the danger in the park? A tree that comes alive. One point. Or if you knew the name of the creature, Dark Young. I knew that answer, but I did not answer it correctly, so I can't give myself points for that. What was from the museum? A ritual bowl. The Kotha birthing dish. So I got that one right, so that's two points. Who was the out-of-town cultist? Victor Ingram. I guessed that right. That was it. Well, I didn't really guess it. I mean, I knew guy Victor took it, and they saw his name in the paper. So for number six, that's two points. Why did the cat hiss at the wall in the East Salton Street station? Uh, street uh, because it's sensing the seed. Okay, got one point for that. Who did the hospital workers see? Oh, I didn't need the exact name. I, I said they. I said, oh, what's his name? I can't remember his name from the Silver Twilight. So I'm gonna give myself that two points. I did say Silver Twilight. Who was Barclay Rutger, the head of the brand, uh, up to drinking with his friends at the University of Isle? Oh, I got that wrong. Okay, got that wrong. What is the name of the night visitor of the graveyard? Thomas says that name is, I didn't see that name come up at all in my investigation. Why did the late night graveyard visitor visit? He suffered from insomnia. I could never have guessed that. And what is the word? Uh, Narlathope. Narlathotep. Well, that's another elder being. Uh, it's not like the Herald. Of Shumnugarath uh, or something? Hmm. Okay. So together, my points are I got 5, 10, 15, 17, 18, 20. So that investigation, I scored 20 points. Sanity penalty of you visited Upton Park. Encountered a dark young. Nope, I did not. I, did not. I never went to the park. The scene of the crime. I never went there. Uh, locations visited. Count the number of locations you traveled unless a location did not contain an actual written encounter. Deduct one point for every location you traveled beyond seven locations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I lose seven points. Minus 20 minus seven equals 13. <laughs> Final score, 12 points or more, you win. You win, 12 points or more. Wow, just barely came in. But this is awesome, a, a game I won. Didn't need to have any dice to, to screw up or cards to screw up or even rules to mess up. That, that's that's really good. I feel, I feel very positive about this win, unlike last night's win. Uh, 12 points or you win. On the following page, you may view the locations Armitage visited. 
So there was fewer than 12. Armored just realizes that you are still an amateur and he offers you a bit of help on the next investigation. On your next investigation, you may visit m one more location. You, you may visit one more location more than Armitage without scoring a penalty on that location. See, now if it was 18 or more, you've done quite well and you've convinced them that you have attracted the attention of someone. Go to Investigator 2 Supplement Encounter. Well, I, I can't do that. But I can look at Armitage. So, so let's see. We both started out C11. I never went to the Orn Library. I didn't get to the museum until like near the end there. Or not at all. Yeah, I did at the end there. Uh, Percival Fenton. Oh, he must have been so happy to see Armitage show up. Uh, Criminologist D45. I, I did go to Corbett. I did go to the boarding house. I did go to his house. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are the seven that he did. Those are the seven that he did. So he, so he had this figured out by morning of the third day. Uh. In the end, a simple mystery. Back in Armitage's office, you feel the legwork of the week was far from simple. The garrison, reclining near the open window in a leather wing back chair, gives a look that implies he agrees with you. Garrison says, There was a question of the woman's identity to wrestle with Henry. That seems like the most pertinent fact that we were missing from the start. Armitage nods. Indeed. That was the forefront in my mind as well, Inspector. And once I had visited her room at Ronnie Bordy's house, I was able to put a name to a young, young lady. Miss Martha Modine. Garrison looks perplexed. What on earth led you to the French Hills, the Renee House? Ah, alas, Inspector. So wrapped up your offices, door to door, soliciting over the identity of the young lady, you neglected her possessions. Her receipt from the boarding house clearly showed that she had entered to stay there for another month. This then led me to the friend, Hartwell, and his lair, so clean and tidy. Garrison shrugs. Grudgingly, an, ad uh, an admission that forces surrounding streets. <sighs> Garrison shrugs grudgingly. An admission that a focus on the surrounding streets was the wrong call given the circumstances. Well, what happened to her then? Why did the villain Hotnell attack the woman? He professed that he loved so much. That, Inspector, perhaps we will never fully comprehend. Mr. Edward Hartwell had a love greater than the one he professed to hold for Martha. There was a special bond between the two, but uh, Edward was held thrall to the dark powers beyond our world. The rantings he uttered upon his arrest were testament to that. His love for the unspeakable evil Shiv Nugrath outweighed even his fondness for the lovely Miss Modine. He must have been planning it for some time, slipping one of those damned seeds into Martha's food where it wiggled its way into her chest cavity, there to grow and feed on her like some parasite. Martha was unknowing host of this evil inside her. I must admit that Weasel Pasquale was of some use there, and it confirmed what I had learned from reading Eban in the library. A lingering memory of his feeling for Martha must have prompted Edward, in remorse, to redress her and lay her out to expire rather than to complete the prescribed sacrifice. It is likely that the secret it is likely that the secretions of the spawn, that foul mucus, stayed the blood flow for a short time and dealt the pain. As the influence of the spawn waned after its removal, it is clear that Martha awoke and was able to stagger back to the street and try to find help. Garrison interjects suddenly. Why the attack in the park, then? Surely he was taking a risk in such a public place. Armitage pauses, then, knowingly responding. It would seem the ritual needed to be overseen by a watcher, a dark, young, Shib Nugrath's blasphemous child. Where could one of these evil creatures hide in Arkham but in a heavily wooded park? He needed to conduct the ritual outside, yes. What risk was there in an overgrown park of Upton? Park. With a slice and a snap of bone, he was able to free the unholy spawn and store it in the Cathola birthing dish that was taken from the museum, that is, and so they could transfer it to a more secure bindings and hand it over to his friend, Victor Ingram. 
It's a shame that you missed him, Inspector. Nelson nods in the suitcase next to Armitage's desk, the twinkle in the back of his eye. I have shame. Seems like you and I have a trip to make in the morning. Unfinished business. Oh, cool, 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 cool. I really, really like this. Uh, this whole aspect of, of investigating and figuring out on your own where you want to go, what looks better to go here, to go there. This was really fun. I look forward to... Uh, what's the next one? Not right now, obviously, but we have Flesh and Blood. Investigation 2, August 8th, 19... August 8th, 192. That's a long time ago. Uh, 1929. Yeah, a little bit longer on this one. All right. Yeah, and I definitely want to see this uh, this the, the, this advancing, overarching, uh, epic plot line that's going to run through all of these adventures. I can't wait to see that. And I, I can see some level of replayability. Uh, my guess right now is maybe one other replay. Um, it, it's tough to say because once you know what's going on, you really I, I think you would just really be doing the other replay just to see how you could find out other information. But remember, th uh, there's also a chance that I, I uh, could have missed something for the for the overarching story. Something else along those lines. Uh, and that, that could be important. So who knows? Uh, but this is really fun. I love the components. I loved the newspaper aspect of it. So for, for a very first playthrough, I got to say, I had a lot of fun. And I was I was a little impressed. Sure. I was a little impressed. I forgot about my little man. He didn't get He's going to Jesus drowning here in the Miskatonic. He got lost. He's gone. Bye. <laughs> All right, so uh, two hours to play one adventure. Um, and I, I like that. I, I don't think I would have played it that much faster if I wasn't on camera. I know sometimes it slows things down, but I don't feel like that was the, the what happened here because there was nothing to do but read. There was nothing to do but read. Uh, I wasn't moving pieces around. I wasn't rolling dice. wasn't working cards. So even if the camera wasn't on, I, I don't think it would have saved me a lot of time. But yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. If you, if you haven't played this before, or, or maybe if you haven't played it in a really long time and you want to try something different, uh, going different paths, learning different things, uh, th this is this is a great playthrough. This is a great playthrough for your first time. Uh, and uh, let's see. I can't wait to see what the overarching story is, what Victor Ingram has going on. I'm very excited. All right, so Mythos Tales from 8th Summit. 8th Summit, right? The 8th Summit. So thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy your October, your Halloween, and let me know what horror-based games you are playing or which ones you wish you were playing. I'm your buddy, Big Johnny G, the Two Gun Pixie Presents Legendary Gaming, and my friends, I am...